feel right about this. I don't know what it is. Is it too much? Too much shoulder. Definitely is this outfit because I need to change. I don't know what I was thinking. Wow. Please ignore that my, oh, you can see my hands. No. <laughs> it's been too long. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I'm sorry. Oh. Hey everyone, it's Jayla and it's been a while. Yeah, sorry about that. I took a little break from YouTube. I mean, I didn't, but I just didn't know what to film. Like everything that I wanted to film just felt very, like, it just didn't feel like it was worth filming. So I don't know. I'm trying to figure that out and plan stuff out. But for now, I'm just doing your standard book haul. You know, we have to go back to the basics when we start to get a little creative block. So I have about seven books here to, I mean, no, <laughs> I have 17 books here to show you. Clearly I'm not good at math, so that number might be slightly off. I hope my chair isn't super loud. I got a new chair, by the way, everybody. Check this out. So new chair, because my sister took my old couch back to college with her because it was hers, but it was mine for the time being and it's not fair that she took it away. So I got this and then I got some lights. Um, I'm not sure if I'm super happy with the placement right now but we're kind of spicing things up over here because I want this to be the best, most appealing. Hmm? I want it to be appealing for you all. I don't want it to be a boring background. So it's a beanbag chair. I hope it's not super loud. If it is, I'm sorry. And I'll try and move as little as possible, but it's also not the most comfortable chair. So <laughs> we'll see. Okay, now on to the books. This is not in any particular order, but this is the last thing I purchased, so I guess if we were going backwards, it would be. I got Get Alive Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. This was solely a hype buy. Everyone talks about this book on booktube. Um, Paperback Dreams, Cat. she talked about it and like cried a little bit as she reviewed it. And I don't know, I want to feel those kinds of emotions. And Kat is someone who's almost never like impressed by romance. So the fact that this had her being like a wailing, flopping mess it means something to me. I'm not as hard to crack. A good romance is a good romance to me and I think there are plenty of them out there, but this one must be special because so many people have said such great things about it. It's steamy, I heard. There's a black girl in it, black plus size girl with a, I think she has a chronic illness or like she has chronic pain. So that's super important representation. And yeah, all of this just sounds like, why haven't I already read this? And I've had this for at least four days now. So why haven't I already read this? Next, I have a birthday gift from my friend, Sarah, and this was given to me back in July because my birthday is in July. But yeah, I truthfully, I've already opened this. I know what's in it, but just for the sake of the tubes, you know, basically she got me this blind date book from a little Etsy shop, which is really cool. And it came with a postcard right there. It comes with, it came with a bookmark too, but I forgot to put it back because I've been using the bookmark for other reads. But yeah, she sent me this little note. It says, happy 22nd birthday to my favorite book lover. I hope you enjoy reading this blind date. So yeah, that was really cute. Thank you, Sarah. And I guess I'll open it on camera now. Voila. Okay. Oh, here's a little up close look at, wait, can I swatch this? Is that, there's a little up close look at the postcard. It's really pretty. There we go. So here we go. Nope, nope, this can't just be easy. I don't want to mess up the, the paper, the wrapping paper. <gasps> oh, and I messed it up anyway, didn't I? Mm, not too much, not too much. It's still in good condition. So we have Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. This is, I remember this was a movie a long time ago and obviously it was a book first. I have no strong feelings towards Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter, because it's not something I think I've ever leaned towards. Does this count as horror? Or is it like, yep, fantasy horror. So that's cool. This actually is just in time for this horror kick that I seem to be on. If you go follow me at La La Loves Lit on Instagram, you will see that I just posted a horror book haul and you can see all the horror that I've recently bought and I've been buying a lot of it lately, I don't know why. I wish I had unwrapped this sooner so I could have included it in the haul, but that's okay because there's plenty of other books that I've been buying. So this is gonna fit right in with all the horror that I've bought lately. And also I read a pretty disappointing vampire read last month. And if you don't already know, as I've explained in previous videos, I'm doing a 2020 reading challenge. And one of the challenges is to read a vampire book. 
And so since that one didn't really do it for me, maybe this one will. Also back in July, I went to a bookstore with my friend Cindy. You saw that vlog if you've been here long enough. If not, hey, welcome. So yeah, we went to a secondhand bookstore. We sold some books, we bought some books. And one of them that I picked up was The Brief and Wondrous Life of Oscar Wow. I don't know almost anything about this book. I know it's about this guy whose name is Oscar. He's a writer and he really wants to be the next J.R.R. Tolkien. The book describes him as a sweet but disastrously overweight ghetto nerd and basically it talks about how his family has been cursed for generations and I think it's about him kind of trying to break this curse and traveling to the Dominican because he is Dominican from his home in New Jersey to kind of break this curse. I think that might be what this is about. Unclear. So I bought this because like yeah the synopsis is kind of interesting but I know that this is also one of Hannah from A Clockwork Reader's favorite reads and she has pretty great taste so I'm excited to read it for myself. Then I got The Prince's Gambit by C.S. Packet. Packet? I don't know how to say his name. Oh, you can't see. Ooh, there we go. Um, this is the sequel to the Captive Prince trilogy, which I have never read. I don't own the first book because oops. This belonged to my friend Cindy and we were going back and forth just giving each other books that we didn't really want anymore and this was one of them that she didn't want because she didn't have the first book and I think at some point maybe I will buy the first book and so I wanted to have this. I would like to know people's thoughts about this trilogy if you've already read it because I heard about it through booktube and I heard like fun things about it being steamy and like it's a, it's a gay romance, by the way. But I also saw an Amazon review that was very, like it made it seem very problematic. So, I mean, I guess you can argue that this is about, I could explain what it's about. So it's about this dude, <laughs> no, it's not. It's about these two princes. I think they're both princes. One of them might be a king. I don't know, honestly. Um, and I can't really tell you because it's only, it's the sequel. It's book two, but basically one of the princes kidnaps the prince of another kingdom and has them as his captive prince. Would you look at that? And like a romance develops out of that. So like, yeah, romances that are built out of hostage situations probably aren't the best. How are you lost, baby girl? But I'm excited to read it for myself and figure out if it's problematic. And maybe I'll even talk about it here if I decide things are kind of weird with this romance. But yeah, first I have to get book one and we'll see if I end up purchasing it. The next thing I got was the Chaos Walking... Chaos? Did I say Chaos weird? The next thing I got was the Chaos Walk... Chaos? Chaos? The next thing I got was the Chaos Walking... I feel like I'm saying Chaos weird. Am I saying Chaos weird? Tell me in the comments. <laughs> The next thing I got was the Chaos Walking Trilogy by Patrick Ness. This is probably one of the more popular series um, people know about. I learned about it through booktube. It's getting a movie, I think, in the next year or in this year. Well, who knows what's happening with movies this year, but I know that it's supposed to have a movie. I don't know if it's been canceled. I heard bad things about it. It follows a dude and it follows his dog and they live in this town where everyone can hear each other's thoughts and I think he tries to leave the town or something and goes on some sort of adventure. Unclear on all the plot points, but I thought it was really interesting because I love dudes and dogs. <laughs> I love that kind of, you know, that relationship. And I know it's written really interestingly, like it's written phonetically, I believe, in some cases. It's not really... there's definitely not proper spelling and proper grammar throughout the entirety of it, so that's cool. Um, it's also dystopian, which I really love. I know dystopian's kind of dead in the world of literature now, but I really enjoy it still. And I think it might be making a comeback. So I don't know. We're gonna, we're gonna check this one out. We'll see how we feel about it. Another book that I got when we went on that little bookstore adventure was The Last Wish by Andre Slipkowski. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. I think I've talked about, I talked about this in my Reading Rush TBR, so I won't go into too much detail. This is a bind up of short stories from the Witcher universe. It's a bunch of prequel stories that lead into the actual like Witcher series. As I've already said, I watched The Witcher earlier this year. I love that show, it's so fun, and I'm gonna rewatch it again and again probably. And I really wanna read the books now because of how much the show has such a like, influence on me. I think the first season is these stories, I think. I don't know, don't quote me. I'm not committed to that universe. I'm not a super fan. I just really like the show. But yeah, hopefully I can get past my love of the show and read the book unbiasedly and not like hate it. Please let me know if it's super different from the TV show, if you've both watched the show and read the book, or if you've like played the video games too. I'm assuming the video game is kind of different. I don't know. Another book that I recently purchased as I'm going through my horror is all I care about phase is 
Kinder is the Flesh by Agustina Basterica. This is a book about a futuristic Argentina in which all the animals have been deemed to have some sort of virus that kills people if they eat the animals. And so they can no longer eat meat. Humans have to eat humans, but they don't call them humans. They call them special meat, and they are basically processed in a factory and just served as if they are like actual animal meat. I don't know if I can necessarily classify this as a horror novel, but it definitely sounds like a scary story. Um, and it's dystopian, which again, I love. So this sounds super interesting. I remember, I don't remember whose channel I was watching when I, they talked about this book, but they compared it to another book I had read and I was like, I have to buy this. So whoever said that, thank you so much for putting this in my life. I already read a few pages of it when I first got it and I was instantly hooked into it, even though the writing style is very simple, but I haven't read it fully yet and I really want to get to this one soon. I want to get to all my horror books soon, but yeah, this one sounds really, really interesting and it's going to have some very, very significant messages, I feel like. Another book that I purchased was Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. If you haven't already watched my July wrap-up, this book changed my life. It didn't really. It was just really cute and I really enjoyed it and I want everyone else to enjoy it. So go on, go find it. If you don't want to be bougie like me and don't care that you don't have all the books like in a physical copy, you can read this as a webcomic. I believe it's on Alice Oseman's Tumblr. But however, like I said, I'm bougie and I want to have the books, so I'm waiting until I get volume two and three before I read further. But I loved this story. This is about a boy named Nick and a boy named Charlie. I talked about this already in my wrap up, so there's a full synopsis there. But they start out as friends and then it grows into something more and it's just really, really, really cute. So that's all I'm going to say about it. Next, I have An Arc of Legendborn by Tracy Dawn. I am super excited about this book because it takes place in North Carolina. That's where I'm from. It's a black girl. I'm a black girl. And it's like, it gives me Shadowhunter vibes. It's about this girl named Brie Matthews. She is 16, but she's doing this kind of college readiness program, I think, for smart kids. And basically while she is doing this program, she finds out that there's a secret society of people who hunt demons. Does this sound familiar? Why? Maybe it sounds like Shadowhunters, which I love. I'm not saying they're the same story. I, I don't really know enough about this to claim that. Um, and I don't have a problem with it necessarily. I'm just saying that I love Shadowhunters and this sounds like something that's up my alley. This also is supposed to be a Merlin retelling. So it's definitely not Shadowhunters. I just think of Shadowhunters when I hear it and that makes me excited. So not only is there a black leading female in this fantasy story, it is urban fantasy taking place in my home state. While I don't really live in the UNC area where this takes place, I know the area, it's super popular, and it's just really cool that it takes place there. So I can pretend to be Brie while I'm like looking at colleges even though I'm 22 now. <laughs> the next thing I have is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. This is a horror book. Look what the theme is of this video. And I heard about this book because Seiji from The Artist and Geek talked about it in one of her videos and I was instantly drawn in. It was like, oh yes, I need to read this. I talked about this in my Stay at Home TBR video but I'll just quickly rehash what I know about it. It's about this group of Native American friends who go into the woods for like a camping trip. Um, I believe all of them have kind of lost touch with their cultural heritage in some way and they don't really like lean into it as much anymore or they're just distancing themselves from it. And basically um, while they're on this trip, things come to light. Uh, they're being hunted, I believe, by some sort of Native American folklore creature. I don't know much else, but I really don't need to know much else. I don't want to know much else. And I'm excited about this because Stephen Graham Jones is described as the Jordan Peele of literature. And I love Get Out. I love Jordan Peele's horror and how it has social commentary mingled in it, which I believe this also does as well, or it wouldn't have probably gotten that title. But yeah, I'm really in love with social commentary horror. I think that's something that we should see a lot more of. And if you have any recommendations for both movies or books, I would want to see them. I cannot wait to pick this one up and let you guys know my thoughts on it. Then I got two Junji Ito horror mangas. I know about him only because everyone on booktube seems to love him, especially books with Chloe. She talks about this work a lot and so I was like yeah I want to give these a try. I've never read manga before actually. I read graphic novels, I read comics, I've never read manga though. I watch anime but yeah I've never read any of the books that the animes are based on. So this is my first, this is baby's first manga and I'm very excited to try them out. Um, this one I believe is about a killer fish and this one is about a deadly girl who like murders people. Obviously that's implied but yeah I'm very excited to read these. I heard that Ito is skilled at writing scary atmospheres, very gory depictions, and I don't know how much of a gore person I am. I don't mind it. I can watch it. Um, but I just finished reading Mexican Gothic 
by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. And that book, while it wasn't totally nasty, I was just like gagging at some of the things that she described. So we'll see how that plays out in images. Next, I have The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. This book is about a girl and she's living in this village where she's kind of shunned. People don't really like treat her with respect. I believe that there's also this haunted woods that people are told not to go into and an incident ends up sending her into the woods and she like discovers witches and finds out that her mother was involved in and finds out that her mother was involved with the witches somehow and so it's all very interesting. She's kind of trying to figure out like how could she have done this and what's going on here? So we love a historical fiction horror story featuring a black bead. That's what we're here for. Very excited to get to this one. The next few I'm just going to do together because they're all from the same people. I got a book of the month subscription, which was probably a really bad idea. Ooh, ooh, oh dear. I have four books from book of the month and that is The Space Between Worlds by Micaiah Johnson. <laughs> Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Marina Garcia, as I mentioned previously. Ninth House by Lee Bardugo, which was a very much older book of the month that I didn't have the subscription, so I wouldn't have gotten it. And I just hadn't gotten Ninth House yet, so I was like, why not get it now? Well, it will be significantly cheaper. And then The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett, which has been all over Bookstagram. Everyone loves it. It's such a good story. I know that people are giving it really like raving reviews and Britt Bennett is supposedly just a very talented writer. I'll give a quick synopsis of each book and then we will wrap this up. I did talk about this one as well in my stay at home tag, but just a basic rundown. It's about these two sisters. One is very dark skinned. They're both black. One is very dark skinned. The other is very light skinned and she's white passing. And they live in this very small black community. But one day they leave this black community and kind of go out into the world and they both decide to live very different lives. One, the dark skinned one lives as a black person because it's all she ever can live as. And the white passing one lives as a white person and they grow up, they have their own families. And then the white passing one comes back to the town. And I think it's kind of like just a story of what happened in all that time. And I like it because it reminds me of Their Eyes Were Watching God which Janie is kind of telling the story of when she left her town and she ran off and she ran away with these guys only to come back and share with the townspeople like what happened. So I feel like it's going to have kind of that vibe to it, which I really like. So I'm excited to get to this one, as I've said with every other book that I've talked about. Ninth House. I'm not going to bother to read the description to you. I know that everyone already knows what this is. And personally, I don't know that much about it. It's about this girl named Alex. She ends up going to Yale. I don't even know if she's a student. I think she is, but she could just be a part of some weird stuff but I know that she gets involved in some weird stuff and it's like a dark academia novel. And yeah, Yale, secret societies, girl wrapped up in the middle of it. I think there's demons, I don't know, but that's all I really needed to know. I love Libardigo's other work. I still need to read the Grisha trilogy, but it's fine. Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Isn't it sad that this is like one of two books that I've read in this giant pile of books that I've been collecting since May? Is it May? Oh my god. Mexican Gothic is about this girl named Noemi. She lives in Mexico City, Mexico, you know, the place. And she gets a really frantic letter. I was about to say email, but this takes place in the 1950s, so that's just not correct. She gets a really frantic letter from her cousin who was recently married off to some guy. Um, very hastily married. Like, Naomi didn't really know anything about the family that she got married into, and they kind of just went away and haven't visited in the year that they've been married. Um, she gets this letter from her. And it's basically saying that she feels like she's being poisoned and that there are voices in the walls. And the woman is like, this is not my cousin. Like, she doesn't act like this. This is weird. And so she goes to see what's going on at this house in the Mexican countryside that her cousin Catalina lives in. And weird stuff happens. That's all I'm going to say about that. I really enjoyed this book and I filmed a whole review about it, but I'm not sure I'm going to post it. I just wasn't super happy with it. I haven't really watched the footage back completely, but... I don't know. Let me know if you want to see it. But if you're interested in just like hearing my thoughts, I can totally talk to you about it in the comments if you want to. And I'll also talk about it in my August wrap up, of course. And last but not least, The Space Between Worlds is about this girl who's like dying a lot, which I don't know how to say it any better, but the synopsis does. <laughs> Basically, interdimensional travel is real. We find out that there are a bunch of alternate universes and people can like go into their alternate universe where they live, but only if they're version of himself in that universe has died. And so the main character in this book, her people, versions of herself are always dying for some reason. She's not really sure why. Um, and so she's able to travel a lot to these different worlds. And I don't know like what the conflict or anything in this is, but I love alternate universe stories. And I hear this one has a lot of social commentary in it as well. So I'm super excited about that. 
because we love sci-fi with a social commentary twist. And also it's a sapphic romance, so I'm super excited for that as well. But this was my latest book of the month box for August, and I really hope I enjoy it. I clearly have so many books from book of the month, and the pile is already starting. I did not need help increasing my TBR, so this subscription was probably a mistake. But we'll see. We'll see. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. These are all of the books that I read. Oh no, I didn't read these. I bought them. I haven't read them. I need to. These are all the books I bought in the last few. Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw that coming. These are all the books I bought in the last few months. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment down below telling me if you've read any of these, what your thoughts are. And also, I said a lot of things about comments, so do any of those as well. Thank you so much for watching. You can follow me on my bookstagram at Lala Loves Lit, or you can be friends with me on Goodreads so we can see what each other is reading and see each other's reviews and stuff. That would be really cool. Other than that, I am done talking, so I will see you in another video, maybe, since it's been a while. Goodbye. Okay. 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 Ooh.